Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from J Team Games, aka the worst YouTuber in the history of the world. So sorry for my poor upload rate recently. I've had some problems with making this tutorial actually. It's a couple bugs and I just kind of forgot about it. So now we're gonna be jumping right back into it. This video is gonna be a little bit unscripted. I'm gonna, I kind of want to go back to being unscripted videos. What do you guys think? Drop a comment below if you think I should go back to unscripted or I should stay with my scripted videos. So yeah, again, sorry for being a bad YouTuber, haven't uploaded in forever, but here's what we're gonna do. We are going to be making a very basic enemy AI in this tutorial. So in the last one we made health, I believe. I don't know, I don't have internet right now, so at the time of recording this video, so I don't know what we did last. But there's one big change, and that's the fact that we have changed the player stats from a JavaScript to a C Sharp. So I decided because we've only made one JavaScript and we've only made three videos, and we haven't really done that much with JavaScript yet, I literally spent the past three days trying to figure out this bug. It took me three days to figure out a bug that I had with this player stat script and I could not fix it. I looked all over Unity Answers. I think I asked like 80 questions. I could not figure it out. So I just decided, you know what? We need to get these videos rolling. Let's just go back to C Sharp. I will put a link to a JavaScript to C Sharp translator as well as a link to this brand new script. So yeah, there's not that much different between the two um, scripting languages. I just prefer this one because I've been using it for the past three years. So let's go ahead and open this up. I've already got mine open. But the first thing we are going to do is we are going to delete this function, right? This if statement that we put inside of our update function. We're just gonna delete that. You could follow along with JavaScript if you like, but I'm gonna be doing mine in C Sharp. So I'm gonna delete the damage variable as well. So I'm gonna delete the damage variable as well because we're gonna actually be using a function to determine that. So I'm going to create a new void called hit. And now inside of here, I'm going to create a new integer variable called damage. Now, the reason we're doing this is that the enemy can determine how much damage to take. A heavy enemy would take or give more damage than a light enemy. Now, there's only one problem. This is a, just a normal function right now. We just need to add public to before it like you would a variable so that other scripts can access this function. Now, all we have to do is we just have to say is hit is equal to true. Then we need to say health minus equals damage. If you didn't delete that variable up here, it will become a problem because this variable is named the exact same as that one. You can always rename this one, but I just prefer to go ahead and get rid of that one. And then below that, we're just gonna write is hit is equal to false. I can't type today. Great, so now I'm going to save the script and jump back into Unity just to prove that this works the exact same way. So I've already got this added on there, but you'll notice that when I play, and I shouldn't be maximized right now, and I hit escape to jump out. So I hit escape so that I can get my mouse right here on the first person controller. As soon as I hit is hit, nothing happens. And that's the point because we don't want anything happening when that variable is triggered. We want the enemy to take the damage. And so rather than just setting is hit to true, I decided to do a function because I really like this better. So now we're gonna go back to our Unity project. I'm gonna right click on the project window and go to create C Sharp script. I'm gonna call this enemy AI. Now this is gonna be an extremely basic enemy AI. Basically all it's gonna do is as soon as he enters, it takes one damage. That's all it's gonna be. But you know what, before we do that, let's go ahead and make an enemy because we kinda need something for this to be attached to. So I'm gonna go to game object, 3D object, capsule, cause I really like the capsule right here. I'm gonna drag this down and make sure this is like right in front. I'm just gonna move this on the X a little bit. That's right there. The problem is that this works except for we need something to determine what hits it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to game object, create empty child. Now this will make a child object on our capsule, which is a really nice feature that came out in one of the newer versions of Unity. And on here, I'm gonna to go to add component physics capsule collider. Now, if I turn on gizmos, just so you can see this in game view, you'll notice that it's kind of like a circle. So we're just going to raise this up just a little bit. And it's about two, I guess. But we're actually going to bump that up a little bit more to about 2.75. So it goes a little bit higher. And then I think, and then this radius, I'm going to change it to 0.75. Uh, one, like so. So I'm going to drag this enemy AI script onto this um, child object right here. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this object collide collision. I'm going to rename it collision check. And then I'm going to rename our capsule to enemy. All right, great. So I'm going to double click to open up enemy AI. I'm just going to reload that. Now on here, I'm going to delete everything like I normally do in my scripts. And I'm going to create a few different variables. I'm going to create a public string called player tag. This is so that we can identify what enters our collision. So let's call this player tag. I'm going to go down and I'm going to go to void on trigger Enter. Now inside of here, I'm gonna create a new collider variable called call. 
Now, basically all this is gonna do, this is gonna allow us to check the details of the object we hit. So inside of this function, I'm gonna check if call dot game object dot tag is equal to double equal sign here. And then I'm gonna say player tag. You could input a string like I tried to do there, but I stopped myself, but that's not where I'm gonna do it. So now that we've got this opened up, we need to set a damage variable. So I'm gonna go up to our variables and create a new public int called damage. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new variable for our player stats. And the way we do this is we get a, we could say player stats and it's already up here in our recommended. And I'm just gonna call it stats is equal to col dot game object dot get component. I type game object again, get component. And inside of here, player stats. So for some of these longer lines, I'm just gonna wait a little bit and write out the entire line and then explain as we go. Basically what we're doing here is we are making a new variable of this script. So a new instance of the script in our scene. And we're assigning it to the component on the game object that just entered our collision checker. Now underneath this, we're gonna go stats.hit. Now because this is a public function, we can see that it already takes a damage due to this handy little thing right here. I can't highlight that. So inside the parentheses, I'm just gonna say, damage. I'm going to save this script and I'm going to jump back into Unity. Shouldn't have any errors. I don't have any errors. And now I've got this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our rigid body FPS controller and I'm going to go up here to tag and I'm going to change this to player. This one should be pre-built into your scene unless you've made any changes. Just be wary of that. That's how I've got it set up, but you may have changed or deleted a tag before. I'm just going to use this one because it's simple though. Then I'm gonna to go to our collision check and I'm gonna to go to player tag and I'm gonna type in player. This is case sensitive, so it'd be very weird that you could write some code that would make it not case sensitive, but this is just easy. Now for damage, I'm just gonna set it to one. All right, so now I'm going to play the scene by clicking the play button. And now I'm gonna to go to our rigid body, again, hitting escape to jump out, click on our rigid body controller. And now if I walk, as soon as I walk in, nothing happens. And you're wondering why. And that's because whenever we're doing this, we haven't checked one crucial part of our collision. And that is, is trigger. So on here, we just go to is trigger, set that to true, and that should fix all of your problems. Basically what it does is it makes it only check for things that enter it, rather than just sit there like a normal hit, like a collider. So think of it more like it's checking for something instead of actually applying the physics to an object. Hit the play button again and run into it. And I can't see my health right now, so I'm gonna go back. You'll notice I'm on four right now. Three, two, one, and in the bottom left, I'll highlight it. It goes to dead like we made in our previous tutorial. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video sucked. You know what to do. But if it didn't, drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss a tutorial. Don't forget to check out our website, social media, and merch. All of those links will be in the description below. Also, don't forget to join our Discord channel for some community activities. I'm planning to do some giveaways coming up, so just go head up that Discord link will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.